In this video, we will look at intramarket differencing, a very simple multi-symbol analysis technique. We will consider Bitcoin and Ethereum as an example. Here's a plot of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Just by looking, we can see that the prices of these two cryptocurrencies tend to move together. The correlation between the hourly log returns is 0.84 when measured from 2018 to 2023. This isn't surprising or necessarily interesting. Crypto in general tends to move together. But what I find interesting is when one crypto is doing something different compared to the others. Perhaps the simplest way to do this is intramarket differencing. An example would be measuring the RSI on both Bitcoin and Ethereum, then subtracting the two RSI readings at each candle to create a new indicator. This idea isn't restricted to the RSI. In theory, any indicator measured on one symbol could be used. But for intramarket differencing to be useful, the indicator measured needs to be stationary and normalized to have the same scale for both symbols. To provide an example for the normalization of an indicator, I'll use the closing price minus a moving average. In its raw form, this indicator is not viable for intramarket differencing. This is because different symbols have different price scales. The higher price of Bitcoin will dominate an intramarket difference. Using logarithmic prices is a typical remedy for scaling issues. But another problem is different symbols have different volatilities. Bitcoin and Ethereum actually have comparable volatility, but if we were instead considering Bitcoin and Dogecoin, the different levels of typical volatility would be an issue. Both the scale of prices and the inherent volatility of different markets should be considered when preparing indicators for intramarket differencing. For the close minus the moving average, we can mostly remedy both of these issues by dividing the difference between the close and a moving average by the average true range. Let's look at the code for this normalized indicator. This function, CMMA, implements this indicator. We pass it the open high low close data, a look back for the moving average, and a look back for the average true range. The average true range look back should be fairly large, big enough to get a general idea of the volatility present in a market. Since I'm using hourly data, I'll use 168 or one week. We compute the average true range with the pandas TA module. We compute the moving average. Then we subtract the moving average from the closing price. We divide this difference by the average true range. I multiply the average true range by the square root of the lookback. This will normalize the scale of the indicator across different lookbacks of the moving average. The square root is from a property of random walks, which is beyond the scope of this video, but I'll leave a link to something in the description. Here's the normalized close minus moving average indicator with a look back of 24 on Bitcoin and Ethereum from 2018 to 2023. The indicator measured on both symbols has the same scale throughout the period. The values of the indicator generally move together just as the markets themselves move together, but they do differ at times. Let's return to the main section of the code. We first load hourly Bitcoin and Ethereum data from CSVs. We compute the log returns for both cryptocurrencies and shift them forward for a future return. We will use these returns later when we are assessing an example strategy. Now we declare some parameters. Look back is the moving average period for the close minus moving average indicator. Threshold is used by the example strategy. I'll talk about it more in a minute. And ATR look back is the look back for the average true range. We compute the close minus moving average indicator for both Bitcoin and Ethereum using the specified lookbacks. The intramarket indicator is the difference between the indicators measured on both symbols. Here I chose to do Ethereum minus Bitcoin, as the example strategy we'll look at in a second will be targeting Ethereum, but instead we could have flipped it and done Bitcoin minus Ethereum. It doesn't really matter, it's the same information, it just flips the sign. Here's a plot of Ethereum's price and our intramarket difference indicator. When this indicator is above zero, it means Ethereum is higher above its moving average than Bitcoin, and vice versa. Loosely, this can be interpreted as when the indicator is above zero, Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin, and when below zero, Ethereum has been underperforming Bitcoin. Something I find interesting about this indicator is it can have high readings both when the price has been increasing and decreasing. In the crypto market, at least in my experience, momentum tends to work. If something is outperforming, it tends to continue to outperform. So a simple strategy using this intramarket difference indicator is going long Ethereum once it crosses above some threshold, and holding this long position until the indicator returns to zero. The indicator by design is centered at zero. When the intramarket difference is at zero, both Ethereum and Bitcoin are at some sort of equilibrium. Similarly for shorts, when the indicator crosses below some threshold, a short position is entered on Ethereum, this position is held until the indicator returns to zero. 
This function, threshold revert signal, implements these rules. We pass it an indicator, which will be our intramarket difference, and a threshold. We create an output signal and a position variable to keep track of the current position. We loop through each index in the indicator. If the indicator is above the threshold, we set the position variable to 1. If the indicator is below the negative threshold, we set the position variable to negative 1. Now we check for the indicator returning to 0. If the position is 1 and the indicator is less than or equal to 0, we set position back to 0. And if position is currently negative 1 and the indicator is greater than or equal to 0, we set position back to 0. We save the current position to the output signal at each index. Now we're back at the main section of the code. After we compute the intramarket difference, we pass this difference to the threshold revert signal function along with a threshold. I set the threshold to 0.25. The threshold, as well as the look back for the moving average, are adjustable parameters, which as I'm sure you know is a common issue with trading systems. Later we will look at the performance of the strategy across a wide variety of both these parameters. I think the moving average look back is fairly self-explanatory, but how do we set the threshold for this strategy? A good first step is to look at the histogram of the intramarket difference. The threshold should be somewhere in this distribution. If we select an extreme value as the threshold, the trades will be sparse. If we select a value close to zero, the trades will happen more often. The threshold could be set so it optimizes some objective function, but if the strategy is robust, then it should work across many thresholds. For now, let's stick with 0.25 as it's fairly close to the center of the distribution and it will trigger many trades. We multiply the signal we got from the threshold revert signal function by Ethereum's next log return. This will give us the returns of the strategy at each candle. We compute the profit factor using these returns, then we get the cumulative sum of these returns and plot. And here are the results with a moving average look back of 24 and a threshold of 0.25. The overall profit factor is 1.08. There were around 400 long and short trades, both scored slightly above a 50% win rate. No transaction costs were included in these results. I think these results look pretty good, but this is just one pair of the two parameters in the strategy. Let's look at the profit factors of the strategy across a wide range of the parameter values. Here's a heat map showing the profit factor of the strategy with several different values of the moving average lookback and threshold. Nearly every parameter set tested had a profit factor above 1. It appears lower mid-range values of the lookback had a bit better performance, and a threshold around 0.3 was the best in this test period. But overall, the strategy looks pretty robust. Intramarket differencing can be applied in many different ways. Obviously, one could difference other indicators, the ADX, RSI, MACD, and so on. You could difference indicators across many cryptocurrencies relative to Bitcoin, then consider a position in the crypto that has the most extreme deviation from Bitcoin. Throughout the video, I've been saying intra-market analysis, but another term I think might be more common is inter-market analysis. Intra considers symbols within the same market, Bitcoin and Ethereum are both part of the crypto market, Pepsi and Coke are both part of the stock market. But this type of indicator differencing could be used to compare different markets. For example, the stock market with the bond market. I'm not the person to tell you about these two markets relationship, but I've read about people comparing stocks and bonds. In some sense, this video has been about subtracting two numbers, which admittedly isn't super exciting, but I always like to lean towards simplicity, and this is perhaps the simplest way to compare two symbols or markets. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching.